Hello, Brother Monroe here. Welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, but not as you know it, because I have finally bitten the bullet and I've downloaded the Naval Arms Race mod by Baron or O Baron, sorry, the notification. Um, you can find a download link in the video description, and uh, we're going to start off a brand new campaign, but I do want to spend some time explaining what NAR changes because it changes a lot so there's a complete rework of guns all the penetration has been redone uh barrel lengths have been redone by hand i'll point out every individual gun's been kind of looked at um reload times accuracy all of this has been changed to be kind of historical ish the accuracy is about two and a half to ten times better than what you'd see in real life um, to make the game, you know, playable. Because uh, <laughs> otherwise you'd just be shooting a lot and hitting nothing ever. Um, a lot of the quad guns have been removed. Uh, only Britain, France and the USA have quad, quad guns, uh, which is a very interesting change. Uh, as well, um, some of the unlock years have been moved around for guns. You know, when you get uh, twins or triples for smaller ships and, and things like that. Um, apparently, you can also get quad bofers if you're playing as Britain or the USA. We're going to be playing as Italy, though, so anything uh, uh, Italy-centric, I will mention. Um, armor, as well. If I'm going to go into a, a custom battle quickly... Um, Armour has been significantly reworked. First of all, you can have as much armour as you want, which is great. I hate hard limits. But look at this. This is all looking very different. Because, um, look at this. No weight differences between armours, which is a really good change. Much more in line with how armour actually works. There is no functional difference in density between these different types of steel, um, just in terms of how good they are at resisting being shot. But uh, there's some interesting trade-offs here. For instance, uh, the KC, Crip Cemented, 5% resistance buff. That's pretty nice. And 80% armor strength. Um, really nice. And then you've got the non-cemented, which gives you a resistance debuff. So you might be better off avoiding this and going Crip. And then ignoring this when you get it, and then going uh, Crip Cemented, and then you've got uh, the Class A and the Vickers stuff, Improved Crip Cemented, ooh, very fancy, Turny Cemented KC Type, Variable Face Thickness Armor, <laughs> and then the British Cemented Armor, right, yeah, wow, 15% resistance, ooh, that's... Uh, well, we're playing as Italy. We're probably uh, probably try and uh, use that because, damn, that's pretty cool. But really nice changes to to armor, um, and uh, I'm really interested to to play around with that. Um, a lot of the weights uh, have been changed around. Stability's been changed. Uh, loads of other things. So again, if I back into the designer um st stability is now much much better i'm just gonna get the ai to design a ship for me uh there we go um so ship weights have been adjusted to be more realistic uh stability's had a major change in see here look at that 18.6 percent 9.7 percent uh effective pitch and roll has been it's just generally easier to build a ship that has good pitch and roll that should mean for the uh, ai at least, uh, better ships, because the AI often has terrible pitch and roll. Um, guns have been... All, 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 basically, all the uh, weights and things have rebalanced. Apparently, radar and sonar no longer... Um, course prompt scout plane. Okay, I want to have a look at that. Me go 1930. That's a cool little addition. Uh... Go auto design. Um, that's very cool. Uh, deck charges are gone from heavy cruisers. Makes makes sense. 
Uh, triple guns, you no longer get them for destroyers. Twins only, which is very, very interesting. Uh, gas turbines are a bit better. Yeah, just lots and lots of of stuff. You can have fit a five inch casement on uh, some of the protected cruiser hulls as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, always interested to see the AI's process. I mean, this is garbage tier, what it's producing at the moment. Um, torpedo boats, by the way, are now viable throughout the entire campaign. You can build them as uh, frigates, basically. Uh, you can put depth charges on them, uh, I think. Yep, mines, uh, radios, sonar, anti-flooding techs, and things like that. So you can make these cheap little uh, kind of patrol boats to uh, float about and, um, you know, do kind of picket duty and stuff like that. Really, really cool. I, I really like that. That is such a cool idea. Uh, giving us access to uh, something a bit different. Wow, it is really building. Uh, by the way, um, makes me think, uh, community designs. Uh, you can still download the community designs. I'm still maintaining that project, uh, but I'm not going to be using community designs in the campaign, not the uh, the ones that are up on the Game Labs forums, the ones that I'm publishing. I will have a submission form open for people who are using uh, the Naval Arms Race mod. Okay, so if you're using uh, NAR, um, if you contact me through the Discord, and you can find a link down that for to that down in the description, you can get in touch, and I'd love to have some player designs loaded up um, to help the AI out. If nothing else, <laughs> wow, it's taken a really long time on this ship. But uh, yes, there will be a function for you to send in your designs. But you, oh, it actually failed. Okay, um, I don't see that too often. Um, but if you want to send something in, uh, you can uh, through the Discord. Okay, so scout planes, that is a cool little option. Ship facilities to enable float planes. What does it give you? Gun aiming speed, 20%. 22% long. Wow, those are really nice. Uh, by the way, submarines do exist in NAR. They have been rebalanced. I'll get to that in a minute. Radar. Yeah, look at that. Adds, well, it does add a little bit of weight. But uh, ra radios don't. That's good. Uh, are these basically the same as they are? Yeah, interesting. Uh, let's have a quick look at a uh, light cruiser. Um, just going to pop pop some towers on so I get access to this because. No, we don't have sonar yet. Oh, it's down here. Available only for campaign mode. Oh, so radar has... Uh, radar. Sonar has been moved to campaign only. Oh, that's very interesting. And also, I'm noticing light cruisers. Minesweeping. Hmm. Okay, lots to consider. Anyway... Um, crew numbers have been redone and all, all, all sorts of things like this. So, yeah, scout planes. I really like the idea of a scout plane. That's a really cool addition. Um, spotting and accuracy modifier. All this has been redone. Uh, damage has been redone, particularly uh, lightly armored stuff like torpedo boats, destroyers, merchants. They're going to get smashed really quickly. There's no smoke anymore. Smoke is gone. Uh, HE has been nerfed a little bit, which is good. Um, if you fire in a battle, then you will be revealed. So no more uh, Romulan-like cruisers. Uh, torpedoes reload a bit quicker. They're a bit more inaccurate, 
but they're less likely to explode before they hit the ship. Uh, so torpedoes a little bit. I, I'm going to have to test it because I'm used to the balance mod torpedoes where the damage is buffed a lot. I don't know if uh, NAR does that. I don't think it does, but it might do. Um, and uh, battle ranges have been kind of lowered a little bit. Um, so things get close together. But what about campaigns? Well, I don't have any con campaigns to continue, so we're going to be starting a new one. I am going to be playing as Italy, and we're going to start in 1910. Um, I am going to play on normal difficulty, uh, because, well, <laughs> I never played no, um, and with the way that the economies have been rebalanced in 1.4, I know the economies have been rebalanced for uh, NA as well. So yeah, I don't really... Hmm. The the German community design campaign was on normal. It was still fun. Um, and I want my first... You know, when there's a big change, I tend to prefer going back to normal. We'll get back to legendary soon enough. I think playing on uh, NAR is going to be a big enough uh, difference for me. Uh, we're going to leave it on historical. Uh, and I'm going to create my own fleet, of course. And we're going to have AI shared designs on always not that i have shared designs at time of recording but hopefully i will for future episodes so if you're sending a ship in um any year from 1910 onwards i think will work fine but you must be using our the vanilla won't work balance mod won't work please don't send me them otherwise again okay, link in the video description to the discord you can send them in that way um mines and stuff have been rebalanced they do a little bit more uh, damage, but minesweepers are better. It's fair enough. Uh, subs have been nerfed, <laughs> so their range is way, way lower. Um, allied, uh, if you mothball the ship, it's far more likely someone will buy it, which is good. Um, and various other changes, particularly to economy and stuff like that. The hulls have all been redone. Uh, there's some extra hulls. Well, extra hulls. The, some of the existing hulls have been unlocked for uh, nations and things that you may not expect, including some for Italy. So I'm keen to see that. Um, and a whole host of other changes, which, again, there's a, there's a very thorough document <laughs> you can read that... Uh, or Baron, or the, the Baron has, has posted um, detailing every single change. Uh, really, really like it. Um, really, I'm really, really uh, looking forward to it. So, that's the setup in terms of the mod. But, it wouldn't be a campaign without a little bit of uh, a little bit of a twist. And the twist this time is that this is going to be an artisan campaign. If you've not seen my French artisan campaign, you maybe don't know what that is. But it is a challenge where, f essentially, you're only allowed to build one ship on each hull. Uh, and in the French campaign, I did it for battle cruisers and battleships. For Italy, I'm going to say heavy cruisers, battle cruisers, and battleships. So I can only build one so each ship must be completely unique um completely its own thing no classes of ship each one is going to be hand crafted to perfection and so with that i'm going to press the start campaign button and uh get designing okay that uh <laughs> that took a while um but we're into the designing stage. Uh, I'm probably just going to design all the ships. Uh, may well, maybe not even all, actually. Uh, we've got 1.95 billion, so just under 2 billion. Uh, I always find th these colors so similar to me. <laughs> but yes, our border is here. So where do we start off? Politicking wise, constitutional monarchy, very nice. 
with the centre party. Minus five, really, with the centre party. Oof. Uh, 41% naval budget. That's pretty crazy. Okay. Um, our GDP, how does it compare to our neighbours? Pretty similar to the Austrians. Uh, better than the Russians. And then you've got the big, big guys up at the top. Okay. And relations start off generally positive. Okay, that's 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 fine. Um, we can build up to thirty-four thousand tons. That's actually very good. Uh, we're obviously going to max this <laughs> straight away. Um, research. I shouldn't need to fiddle around with that too much to start with. Let's get into the designing. So, what hulls do we have? We have. We have quite a lot of cruisers, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six. Potentially six heavy cruisers. A battle cruiser and three battleships. That sounds about right. We'll have to see about the prices, though. Um, I can build classes of destroyers and uh, and things like that, so that's fine. Um, I think we should... Hmm, I really don't like this hull... I don't like the Dreadnought 1 or the 2, but one of the nice things about an artisan campaign is that I don't get a blooming choice. Uh, it is not up to me. Uh, <laughs> I have, I kind of have to make them work. Uh, so if you get annoyed with me kind of going, oh, I don't want to use that hull, well, an artisan campaign kind of forces it upon me. So we'll go with the front tower there and a rear tower, yep, up on the up on the bit up there. Hmm, funnel capacity ten for yeah, the these double funnels I think Oh no Wow that's crazy. I'm thinking they don't look amazing though. Really, you can't centre it. Ah, oh, that bothers me. Okay, we are going to use the dual funnels then. Uh, I'm thinking that. Four funnels, something like that. Again, I'm kind of going for aesthetics here, because... Why not? <laughs> right, what guns do we have? Mark 1, 14s. I'm kind of thinking the 12s. Um, particularly on this hull. Uh... One four one aft. So this is going to resemble more of a pre dreadnought than anything else. Because, um, yeah, I could potentially go side twelves, but these, these are too big, really, for these cutouts. So I'm thinking of going secondaries. What secondaries do we have? Mark three, mark three, mark three, mark three. Mark three's all the way down. I kinda like the six inch six inch triples. That's that's pretty nice. That'll give me a lot of uh secondary firepower. Yeah, this is basically a pre-dreadnought that I'm building. Um even though it's a, a dreadnought hull. <laughs> uh casements? Really? Casements? Wow, look at that. There's our tertiary battery. <laughs> little castle of pointy pointy guns. I uh, could go torpedoes, but I'm not going to. Um, okay. Cool. I definitely want standard crew quarters. How fast can this thing go? It says fast. 24 knots. That is fast. Uh, I am going maximum size. I tend to with the early ships and then try and pair it back a bit later on. Can build turbines, natural turbines. We have plenty of engine efficiency. Uh, we'll bring the Orcs petrol. I like Electro Hydro. Now, armors. We've basically got a choice between Krupp and MNC. Uh, non cemented class A. Uh, I prefer the Krupp. The 70% armor strength 
That's decent enough. Flash protection, yes. Build all that stuff. This is, this is pretty good tech. It's pretty good tech. Uh, I'm going to start off by just going with what I would say is a standard sort of setup. And then we're going to look a little bit more closely at uh, these things. So we've got an armor quality of 80%. So let's dial this back to 80% so that we're looking at our, our, our own armor on the guns. What are we looking at here? So 10,000 meters might be a realistic battle range for these 12 inch 40 caliber guns. Uh, and we can go through, well, just under 10 inches of armor. So that's not terrible. It's not great, I'll be honest. Uh, what about the six inch guns? They're going through about five and a half inch, 5,000 meters. That's good. That's good. Okay, so this is looking promising for our armoring because we don't need that much armor on the turret face. Jeez. Uh, I think 14 inches of armor on the turret face is going to be more than enough because that means against our own guns, an enemy ship would have to get under 2,500 meters to have a realistic chance of penning the turret, which is going to be very hard for them to do. Uh, what about deck penetration? Wow, that's super low. Look at that. 1.6 inch, that seems more more realistic if you ask me. Uh, so we could probably get away with, um, yeah, just something very light on the top. But uh, I'm going to keep the turrets reasonably well armored and put 6 inch on the turret tops. Um, belt armor, again, it would be lovely to go for a 40, 14 inch would again make us extremely well protected that would be very spicy indeed i don't think we need the full six inch what about five inch of deck armor let's give us a really really well protected ship um okay what about against the six inch guns yeah uh probably six inch it'd be nice to get i mean could we actually just get, be really cheeky and go for this? No, I think we'll shave this down a bit. I think we're going to shave this down. We're going to go for a 12.6. Go for something like that. So that means with six inches of armor against the six inch gun, they're going to have to get within 5,000 meters to have a chance of going through even our extended uh, belts. And the decks are completely protected against that kind of gun. So that's fine. 2 inch, uh, not going to be able to do anything against us. And 12 inch, they're going to have to get reasonably close. Uh, so, talking 8,000 meters, no, less. Uh, more like 5,000 meters, six, six, five, 6,000 meters, before they're going to have a chance to get a pen on us, which is okay. Um, I think that's acceptable. All right, six inch guns. Uh, how much armor do they need? Probably not a lot. They're only secondary. A two inch gun is doing basically nothing. Two inches of pin maximum at super close range. So I think we could we could have these pretty lightly armored. What about? Um, what about using two and a half inch just everywhere? Uh, so we should be reasonably protected against kind of plinking. <laughs> Don't know how else to put it. Six and then three and then, oh, that's too heavy. Uh, let's, can I do uniform layers? Does it let me do that? No. Boo hiss. I really wish the game would let you do uniform layers. Um, let's go three. And one point. Oops. And just some, some light protection on the insides. 
And that gives me a bit of spare displacement, which is nice. Uh, what? Beam slider being there. That is interesting. Look, I can reduce the beam a little bit. Or I can make it super wide. That is very... That's that's completely new. So in the base game, it starts in the middle. But starting down there, that's very interesting. Okay. Um, look at that offset as well. Pitch roll. This is all looking really good. Really, really good. Um... We could go extra... Uh, range is hard to get. But we could get a pip of range and spacious crew quarters. Hmm. Yes, I like it. Uh, I'm going to think of a name. And uh, then we'll move on to the next ship. Right. I've decided there will be a theme. And you might be able to get one theme is, but this is going to be the Augusta, or Augusta, depending on your pronunciation. Uh, we're going to see if we can get that offset down a bit, if we can. But I have a suspicion that we can't get it much better than a half, so half, 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 a, half a thing, that's not too bad, it's 0.1. Point two, point three, yeah, that's all fine. That's all fine. Hundred and two million, so it's not super expensive. Um, I like it. So yes, we're going to save that one. It's going to be our kind of pre-dreadnought-ish ship, maybe semi-dreadnought. It, but yeah. <laughs> That's being generous. Right. The Dreadnought 1. Please tell me I can put the tower down here. No. No. Okay, so it's going to be a... It's going to be a... It's going to be an interesting ship. Uh... Well, that's a front tower that's backwards. Are, are they all backwards front towers? They are. Okay, well, that's all you've got. Uh, you can put the engines in the tower so that the <laughs> ship might have a chance of being balanced. Uh, and then main guns, we're going to use our same 12-inch 40s. One four, one aft, and I think two Q turrets. Think, wow, look at that, no offset. Hey, hey. I think, I think that looks good. Well, it doesn't look good, but it, it could work. Um, right. This thing is going to have six inch casements in the middle. And I think two inch on everywhere else and it's balanced <gasps> amazing <laughs> i don't know if uh a barrow or the baron um went in and manually fixed these holes but i'm amazed that that is a balanced ship it could potentially put some torpedo tubes on it um not a huge fan of the underwater torpedo tubes, but it kind of works on uh, on this vessel. Our uh, two centre ones. Uh, yeah, it's very interesting. How fast can we make this thing go? 22. All right. All right, let's see if we can get that. Yes, we can. Oh. oh. Okay, we're going to go crip again. All the same choices, so I'm not gonna not gonna talk through them. Uh, torpedoes, 18 inch fasts. Why not? Coincidence and a radio. And I'm gonna go for the. Oh wait, I'm way overweight. Okay, 
So I'm not going to be going for this. Fuel, etc. Operational range. Hmm. Yeah, that is a uh, heavy. We suddenly just shot up in terms of weight. Mind you, I haven't looked at the armor yet. Mind you, this came with less armor. Let's let let's try and put the armor on it uh, and see what happens. Twelve, six, six. Uh, let's go three. There's no need to go crazy. Something like this. 40s, 45s, 45s. That's all fine. Uh, how heavy are the torpedo tubes? Uh, not that heavy, but I still think taking them off. They're, they're a luxury anyway. I like this layout. I like this. Well, I don't like it, but this is a layout that could work. Just too heavy. Hmm. We could reduce the range. Yeah, that is helping a lot, actually. What about dropping the speed a touch? Uh, it gets us within shouting distance. 21 knots is fine. Um, oh, yeah, because this, this hull has a reduced draft. Interesting. So all these are different. That is very interesting. What happens if we brought... The draft up a bit. Is that going to help me? It is. Yeah, let's go 5% increased draft. Because that brings my range up as well. I think the problem with the hull was that it was so low to the water that so much space was being taken up by the coal or oil bunkers that you just weren't able to get it. But there we go. Oh, I have to say, I'm loving building ships in uh, Naval Arms Race so far. Because that that was surprisingly surprisingly straightforward to figure out the issues. I I like it. Okay. Good, good, good. Um, name. Uh, I'm going to go for the Victrix. Okay, at 114, so only slightly more expensive. That's good, that's good. Okay, save that. Uh, I'm going to go for a new one. Uh, let's go for the... Go for the Fulminant. The Thunderbolt. Right. Um, so this is basically going to be a repeat, I think. So given that, let's give ourselves the 5% draft increase. And... Let's again target 21 knots. And I think probably the same weird, <laughs> the same weird layout. So these are going to appear to be sister ships, even though they are not. Lovely stuff.
<laughs> we're overweight, but I, uh, we'll we'll do the armor first, and then we'll come back to it. So it's Twelve six six. Uh, yeah, I think the three one point five is is going to be fine on the decks. Uh, two one point five one point five. 14, 6, 14, something like that. 6, 3. And we're 2% overweight. And I reckon if we go down a pip on the range, boom. There we go. Very, very slight aft weight offset, which we might be able to fix. Gonna say there, boom done, but there, boom done. So compared to the Victrix, the Fulminata is yeah, just a little bit more expensive. Basically the same ship. I think she has like one extra pair of six-inch guns, um, and is obviously you know very very slightly bigger, has slightly better range. Um, but you can clearly see that they are they are very similar. But surprisingly, for, for a hull that I absolutely loathe normally, that is not too bad. Okay, yes, AQQX. It's a little bit weird, but um, I think it'll I think it'll work. So I'm going to save this. Uh, I'm actually going to. Head back to the uh, fleet screen, build one of each of these, and then come back to the designer. But uh, you don't have to sit through all that, uh, and I will be back in a moment. All right, it's battle cruiser time. Uh, the Veneno. <laughs> uh, yes, I think a battle cruiser could be very interesting indeed. Tw Twenty-eight. Who? Okay, that's a potentially very spicy speed. Uh, yeah, secondary tower, something, something like this. Funnels, uh, just one big one. Uh, this is looking quite uh, German. This is very similar to how I build the German battle cruisers, I think. I'm going to start with the 12-inch guns, and we're going to go from there. So we're going to go for six 12-inch guns, and then the same kind of 6-2 uh, secondary layout that we've been... Look at that halfway point one. Oh, I love it. You've got so much freedom with this. Um, oil... Turbines induced. Yeah, no way we're getting to 28. Not with one funnel. I wonder. Maybe. We can get a second funnel in. Okay, um, I'm just going to put this one in here then. And I'm looking for one that kind of is the right height. There we go. Oh yeah, very important uh, <laughs> category to get you <laughs> to uh, do that. But yes, there we go. 105% efficiency. Lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. Right. Okay. Now we're cooking. Right. Okay. Uh, again, we'll go, go regular crook. Standard ratio. And 
there we go. Now, armor. Now, this is where things are going to get a little trickier. Let's see if I can build a fast battleship. Uh, let's go for the same 14.6 that I was using before. See, that does get me under. And let's go for a more all or no nothing y approach. So we'd really only need to worry ex on the extended about protecting against, um, you know, little little piddly pop guns, maybe a six inch, something like that. You know, one and a half is going to be more than enough. The main deck, I reckon we could get away with as little as two. Um, Turret tops can maybe trim down as well. Uh, Conning Tower, I do like to have up armored. Let's go for some layers as best we can. The six inch guns, much less on you. Okay, we're 1% overweight. And I think we do that with a ranged pip. And there we go. We have a battle cruiser. It well, I say battle. It is essentially a fast dreadnought. So the Augusta is says it's a fast dreadnought. <laughs> this is an actual fast dreadnought. So we've got two fast ships um, that are lightly armed. And then we have two slower, heavier ships. And I think that I think that'll work. Got a little bit of a forward weight offset, which is surprising. Just gonna see if I can shift the towers a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Perfect stuff. Not you know, not a crazy ship by any means. Um but I think should do okay. Less well protected than the others. Um you know, her her vitals are still well protected, but she's not quite as uh, throw yourself into the midst of everything and just mash it up. Uh, at 122, two, she's not the most expensive ship. She's the second most expensive. I kind of see this as a progression, though. So Augusta first, then Vetrix, then uh, Fulminata, and then the Veneno kind of to... Uh, that's my printer, um, to just kind of give Italy a, a fast response vessel experiment with this idea of a battle cruiser. I like it. Okay, I'm going to save that. I'm going to build one, and then I'm going to come back and do the heavy cruisers. All right, here we are. Um, we're going to start off with the SAC-4, uh, semi-armored cruiser 4. Um, because why not? We might as well try and... Because we're, we're going to be very limited on the number of heavy cruisers we're going to be able to build. So we really do need every... Every single one of them to count. Hmm. Go for that. Uh, so again, it kind of looks like they uh, they match. Now, gun wise, on a cruiser, hmm, we have eight inch Mark threes. We have nine inch. Oh, we have Mark three. All of these are Mark threes. Okay. All right. What kind of hurt are we going to be able to put down? Nine inch is a temptation. Go for a nine inch. What can we do? With a nine inch gun. Ooh, that's punchy. I like it. Yeah, that's going through Yeah, nine inches of armor at seven and a half. They, that would be really good if we could get a nine inch uh, forty five caliber gun. Uh could go side mounts, but 
Again, I'm thinking being a cheeky sausage and just using those mounts for some six inch secondaries and then getting some two inch backup. So very similar design to the Augusta, but you know, on a on a cruiser package rather than a battleship package. We could go twenty three um not that's not too bad that's not too bad at all and we can do it with the turbines natural turbines i like that again we're going krupp um and range finders and we got Quite a lot of displacement left. Uh, this is going to be the Milan. Uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm liking this so far. Let me move that funnel teensy bit. Okay. Torpedoes could be worthwhile, but don't really have... Like, I like it when there's, like, you know... Two or more launches just along the flat side. Um, not too interested when it's like one here and then four and a half. Um, I guess armor then. It'd be lovely if we could get nine inch. Nine inch. Oh, um, a max. A max it at eight point eight. That's fair enough. Um, what is my? Oh wow, it's just eight point eight everywhere. So let's go 8.8 .8 and 4.4. 12 inch on the conning tower, that's nice. Just max the protection on this thing. And there, because it, it, the reason I'm able to do this, by the way, you're thinking, how, how is it so lightweight? It's because I've put six inch guns here. It's kind of thinking, no, you're going to try and shove side side guns in there. But side guns are bad. Don't use side guns. Uh, wow, 13 inch on the turret face. That seems excessive. I think 12 is fine. Um, six on the turret tops would be more than enough as well. Six inch guns. Uh, let's go 4.4, 2.2, 4.4. Two inch guns, 2.2 .2 everywhere. Uh, six inch guns, we could make 50s. There we go. <sighs> Fly in my room. Right, and then what are we looking at? Spacious? No, can't get a pepper range, but we can get spacious. Not bad. It's a little lacking in firepower, but that thing is an absolute unit. That is going to be seriously difficult for uh, for someone to deal with. So I'm going to save this, and I'm actually going to be very cheeky. And I'm going to say that uh, I'm going to split it, because this, this episode is already very long. Uh, and I need a bit of a mental break. And uh, the rest of the cruisers will be in the next episode. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Ultimate Apple Dreadnoughts. Bye for now.